Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Three's daily global conversation around issues dealing with COVID-19. We're going to get started in just a minute. Please tag your friends around the world and tell them that we are live right now. You can watch us live, you can watch us later. This is episode number 94, what we have learned and not learned in three months of lockdowns, health and economic crises, protests, and so much more. Please share with your friends, please tag them. There's someone somewhere in the world who will benefit from this conversation that you know. Tell them, I'd also like to hear what you have learned. Please jump in, post your comments, tell me where you're watching from. We wanna hear from you. We'll get started in just a minute. Tell us where you're watching from, please. And please hit share right now. We are live on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on LinkedIn. Please share on those platforms. Please tag your friends right now around the world. We're gonna start get started. I wanna hear what you think Tell us what you have learned, what you've not learned, what's it been like to be locked down for three months. Some of you are already out of lockdown. Some of you are going into lockdown even more. Tell us, we'd love to hear from you. We're gonna get started in just a minute. Please post your comments. I'd love to bring you in on the conversation and get you to ask me questions and share your thoughts about what's happened with the pandemic. And we're gonna get started right now. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Sri Srinivasan, Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism in New York. I'm honored to convene this daily conversation that brings in people from around the world. And I'm so honored that you would be with me here. It's Saturday night in New York. We've been on lockdown for 94 days and that's how we know this is episode number 94. It's been a long, long time and not such a long time. I've been talking to people about how things have changed with regard to time. And that's just one of the things that we can talk about. Tell us what you've been thinking about. What have you learned? What have you not learned? What are the lessons that will stick with you? What have you been documenting? What have you been keeping? I want to hear all of that on tonight's show. And I want to give you a chance to ask me anything you like. We're at 94 days. That means more than three months of the show. And we're going to head towards our episode number 100 that's coming up this, uh, this Friday on June 19th. And 19th of June is a special day in America because of what's known as Juneteenth. And I know that in the African-American community, it's very well known and marked uh, as a landmark day. But in so many other communities, we know nothing about it. And this year we've been hearing about it and we will talk about what that means as well. And that's on our 100th show that's coming up, but we'll talk about it tonight. I wanna hear from you. Please tell us where you are, how you're doing, how you're feeling. We'll take some, we'll look at some clips of some of our shows from recent months. And I'll share what I have learned in these 94 days of lockdown and 94 days of these shows. One thing I've learned is that none of this would have been possible without you. So many have written in to say this is an uplifting show. Some of you call this a lifeline, but I wanna tell you this is uplifting and a lifeline for me. I have benefited the most from this show and I have learned so much along the way so much about people, so much about systems, so much about leadership, and even some things about me as we go through this unusual time, unprecedented time around the world. So please tell us where you're watching from. We'll do our global tour in just a minute. First, we have to pay our bills, so we're gonna reach out to our sponsors and thank them by sharing their messages. So let's get started. Our first sponsor is Rutgers Global Entrepreneurship Experience, a virtual teen camp. Learn from top entrepreneurs and startup experts 
from Cognizant, Angie's List, Google, Facebook, and many others. There are two one-week sessions, July 13th and July 20th. You can get 20% off with the code SRE, S-R-E-E, -E, at globalentrepreneurshipexperience.org. globalentrepreneurshipexperience.org, 20% off with the code SRE, S-R-E-E. -E. My son is going to be taking this course, he's 17, and he's looking forward to it. He's going to learn a lot, and so will anyone you are sending to this course. So check this out and make sure you use the code for 20% off, S-R-E-E. -E. We also want to thank our sponsor, Art & Co. Get involved with the world's largest online art auction fundraising for COVID-19 victims, 31 artists, and we have also multiple charities that are going to benefit from this, artandco.net, artandco.net, artandco.net. Please check this out very important opportunity to collect some art and to help people in this crisis. You may not be an art collector, but you know someone who is, who has some money to spend on art and can go to artandco.net. We also want to thank Muckrack Academy for letting me do this. Fundamentals of Social Media, a free certification course that starts Wednesday. mrac.co slash social, mrac.co slash social. Please Tell your friends, anybody can benefit from this. Any age, any background, any experience, any industry. I have learned so much putting this together with my friend and colleague, Linda Bernstein. Hope you folks will take a look. I hope you'll all sign up. You'll get a certificate. And the content's about two hours of contents and quiz items. And at the end of it, you get a certificate. And uh, it launches on Wednesday. mrac.co slash social. Do take, check a look, take a look and share it with your friends and family. I also want to tell you about a new show that I'm involved with as an executive producer that launches this Sunday, and it's a spinoff of this show. On this show, we've been talking to so many different people, including medical health experts. And as a result, we're going to be able to bring you a brand new show called She's On Call. And it debuts this coming Sunday, that is tomorrow, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Please tell your family and friends, She's On Call, Sunday, June 14th, 11 a.m. to noon Eastern Time, and at She's On Call on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and Instagram. Please share this with your friends. Please follow them. Dr. Sujana Chandrasekhar and Dr. Marina Kurian will talk to guests about a wide range of topics every week, every Sunday. Today we had a rehearsal. It was awesome. These two ladies are going to do an incredible job. The show is called She's On Call because they're women doctors, but also because women bear the burden of the household, of the workplace in ways that we're not always cognizant of. And we're calling it She's On Call. They're on call all the time. And so please tell your friends and tune in on Sunday, 11 a.m. to noon Eastern time and Give us feedback to docs, D-O-C-S, at she'soncall.com. Docs, D-O-C-S, at she'soncall.com. We are very excited about this show, and we know you will benefit. And you will know somebody who will benefit as well. So make sure you go to Facebook, go to YouTube, go to Twitter, and share this with your family and friends at She's On Call. Thank you for being here. I'm so grateful. I want to see where people are tuning in from. I want to hear your thoughts. Because we don't have a guest speaker today, we can really give you a chance to jump in, speak up, share your thoughts. It's episode number 94 of this show. And that's so hard to imagine. When we started, we thought this would be you know, a few weeks at most. But here we are, 94 days later. Let's take a look at our global tour, as we do every single time we have this show. Jonathan Borstein, incredible. He's been with us for 94 straight days. He's always the first to check in watching from Union Square. Thank you, Jonathan, for your friendship. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for being someone who supports people who are doing content. You're a great content creator yourself, but you're also a great content consumer. My wife, Rupa, who many of you have met on one of these episodes or have seen her in other contexts, she's at Rupa online. She loves podcasts and she's so good. She's had a 
book published about careers in English and in Mandarin. So people have said to her, why don't you have a podcast? And she said, well, someone's got to be listening to these darn podcasts. So someone needs to listen. And Jonathan is one of those people who helps so many people by listening, supporting, giving feedback. And we salute you, Jonathan, for being here for 94 straight days. Doug Levy is here. Hello from the San Francisco Bay Area. Please follow Doug. He's at SF Doug, and he has a wonderful new service where he sends out three or four coronavirus headlines every single day. I read it. I benefit from it. You will too. Go to DougLevy.com, DougLevy.com, or go to SF Doug. He can put in the instructions on how to get it right here in the Facebook group. So, I mean, or in the Facebook uh, discussion that we're having. But please do follow Doug as he shares what he is doing. He's also written a book about coronavirus, the very first book that I saw out of the gate published about communicating during corona. And he's a guest, has been a guest on the show. And by the way, Jonathan's promised to be a guest on our 100th show. Rahadian's watching. Good evening from Center Reach, uh, Long Island. And Rahadian, I feel so connected to you after last night's episode where we learned about the issue of be bearing witness while black. And you jumped in and posted some of your comments. Uh, our guest was Dr. Alyssa Richardson, who was terrific. Her book is called Bearing Witness While Black, African-American Smartphones and the New Protest Journalism. She's a scholar of race, digital activism, and the press at USC. And so we're so glad that we were able to have her on the show last night. Please check out her book. Please follow her at Dr. Ali Rich, A-L-L-I-R-I-C-H on Twitter. Let's see who else is here. Post your comments. We want to share them. Tell us what you've learned. I want to share what I've learned, but I want to hear from you what you've learned as well. Uh, Mark's joined us. Mark, former guest on the show, also a great supporter, always tuning in. I appreciate you, Mark. And Mark was on our episode called How to Be an Ally. And that episode is about what we can do to be allies of African-American folks. And he made the point that we all need to support each other and that in as an African-American, he appreciates it when others show allyship, but there is a lot to learn and we all have to do the work, which is really important. So um, Mark, thank you. Also on that episode was Rahul Dube, who many of you re might remember that episode, an incredible story of Rahul, who during the protests in DC, sheltered 70 people overnight in his home, 70 strangers who were being hunted by the police. He brought them in, locked them in, as the police tried to come in, tried to get him to send them out, and tried to trick them into going out, all kinds of things. And he, an Indian American, said that he knew nothing about uh, the uh, issues around Black Lives Matter, didn't care as much, and now he's dedicating himself to working on some of those issues from the healthcare side which is what his expertise is. All of these episodes, all 94 episodes are on our YouTube channel. And I would love for all of you to go and take a look at our YouTube channel. If you're not a subscriber, please become one. There is so much content there. Uh, this is our YouTube channel and our playlist just of these episodes, but you can see everything we do uh, on, on, this, uh, on this channel. So please go to Srinet on YouTube, S-R-E-E-N-E-T on YouTube and please uh, do share and tell your friends uh, about it as well. Please subscribe. That makes a difference in getting attention to what we do. Jonathan says, so far, the difference between quarantine and phase one reopening is one without a distinction. That's right. Today or this week, we were with the start of phase one of opening. And I'm going to share with you and talk to you a little bit about my first trip out into New York City subway today. Uh, after 94 days, we had a errand that we had to run. Um, the only way we could do it is to be in a subway and there was no choice. So my 17 year old son and I went out and, uh, and went into the subway and we'll tell you uh, about what we saw and what we learned as well. Patricia Freudenberg is watching on LinkedIn. Thank you, Patricia. And she says hi from New York and thank you for being with us. I do wanna tell you that Patricia uh, participated in uh, our Mother's Day promotion where we give everyone a chance to salute mothers on Mother's Day. Well, Father's Day is coming up in just a week and we want you to say, do something for the fathers in your life. It doesn't have to be your father. It could be anyone who is a father figure in your life. So we have this 
opportunity. The New York Times read along, which takes place on Sunday morning at 8.30 and my COVID show. It's a Father's Day edition sponsorship opportunity. 50% of the proceeds will go to charity. Thank a father figure or grandfather, uncle, male role model on Father's Day. For $75, you can submit a picture and a message to be read on air during both shows on June 21st. Just go to digimentors.link slash Father's Day. Digimentors.link slash Father's Day. And please make a participate so that you can say hello to a father figure in your life. We're showing photos here of my dad, T.P. Srinivasan, and Neil Parekh, who's the executive producer of the New York Times Read Along, his father, Prakash Parekh. Interestingly, I knew Prakash a lot better than I knew Neil uh, until he got involved in the New York Times Read Along. And Prakash is was an awesome man as well, just as my dad is, and my dad's in Kerala. So everyone, if you have a father figure in your life that you would like to thank, just submit a picture and a message to be read on the air during both shows next Sunday. And you can participate. It's very easy. Go to digimentors.link slash Father's Day, submit a photograph, submit a message, and we will get that on the air. It'll be a lot of fun. We had such a great time doing that last Mother's Day, and now it's Father's Day in the United States. Tell me, is it Father's Day where you are next Sunday? It may not be because these days are different. I still remember uh, someone asking, uh, because in India they have Father or they have Children's Day, and uh, someone said, but how come there's no Children's Day in America? I said, every day is Children's Day in America. Uh, let's see uh, who else is here. Radian says, no surprise, job hunting is very difficult. Because my immediate past experience was working as a mental health therapy aide, I keep getting job offers from nursing homes and related types of facilities, not worth the great potential of getting infected at the wages they're paying. And that is an outrage that the people who should be supported the most, the ones that we're applauding, that's not enough. We've got to pay them the wages they deserve. Rahadian, please be safe out there. Uh, and everyone, please be careful. These frontline workers are essential workers. If they are essential, we need to pay them more. We need to support them with not just the applause at 7 p.m., which still happens in New York, even through all the protests and everything else. Please do think about this as you are all involved in ways in which we can support people who are doing the frontline work for us. Uh, and by the way, one of the things we discussed multiple times on the show, how is it that we call uh, some, some of the folks frontline workers, essential workers, uh, such as grocery store clerks and uh, messenger uh, folks and uh, delivery men and women, uh, they're called unskilled, but now they're suddenly essential. Well, what is it? Are they essential or are they unskilled? And we need to support these folks uh, so that we can help our, every part of society get past this crisis. And we are facing three crises in America, the uh, health crisis, the economic crisis, and the racial inequality crisis. And we need to talk about that. And we want to hear from you. Tell us what you're seeing, what you're experiencing, and what you have learned in 94 days of lockdown. I will share what I have learned after we do some more of these global tours. Wonder if masks will become collector's item after we get, get past COVID. Uh, let's talk about masks. Uh, I learned so much about masks on this show and these during these shows for Hong Kong University. I've been doing a weekly show with them, and we had guests who have talked about the value of, of, of masks. And there's been something so strange to see that Americans somehow don't want to wear masks. And in East Asia, where masks are common even non-COVID days, uh, it has made a difference to have a mask. And in America, we all must wear a mask when we go out. It is not comfortable, but we must do it. We have seen report after report after study after study that wearing a mask makes a difference. Please wear a mask, please. I went out today with my son and we wore our masks uh, because that's the right thing to do. It keeps us safe, it keeps everyone safe. So please wear a mask as you go outside. I'm just gonna try and pull up here um, some of the photos of my son and I in the subway in New York City today. Uh, that's that's him. I don't have his permission to share photographs, uh, but I figure he's masked, so he may not care as much as he usually does. Um, and 
Uh, this is the empty subway system in New York City. You never see it this empty. And that's what, you, that what we saw today in New York. Uh, and this is Little Italy, where we were for part of the day. Oops. And you're seeing uh, how empty the streets are, how empty New York is. It was just stunning to see it so empty. And uh, we also saw this. And um, on my show, we had uh, on my yet another show, I have the WBAI spinoff show. Uh, where every Saturday from noon to 2 p.m. Eastern time, I talk and read uh, and talk uh, to experts about COVID-19. We call it help, uh, Coping with COVID-19, a helpful, hopeful call-in show. And by the way, you've not lived until you've hosted or been on a COVID, on a call-in show in New York City on WBI. We had people from the extreme left and extreme right calling in. We have so much energy, so much passion. We had a great show today where I continue to learn so much. It's 12 months, 12 weeks of that show as well. Today was episode number 12. And we had as our guests, Brandy Harden and Therese Steiner, who are board members at Justice Aid, which is doing an incredible event tomorrow. Please tune in at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern time, Riverside Church's YouTube channel. And you will hear from Stacey Abrams, Representative Hakeem Jeffrey, Hakeem Jeffries, and so many other people, you will learn a lot as I did talking to them today. And then we had as our guest, Sapphire, the author of Push, which became the Oscar winning Precious. She was a guest on this show uh, a few weeks ago and she talked uh, in, about so many interesting topics. And today as well, she talked about how important it is for all of us to work together, to stand together, to push back and to participate in the new awareness that people have of what's going on in America today. And Sapphire is newly on Twitter, folks. Please follow her, Ms. Saf, M-S-S-A-P-P-H, Ms. Saf on Twitter. Please follow her. You can be among her first 100 followers if you follow her now. She's definitely going to take off because of who she is. It's also the 25th anniversary coming up of the publication of Push, the novel that became precious the Oscar-winning uh, movie. And uh, on, on, on the WBI show, we've had Kimberly Crenshaw, the professor uh, who, a Columbia Law School professor, who coined the term intersectionality. And one of the things she said to me, three, say their names. Say their names is what you see on this sign as well. Say their names. And we will do that. Uh, ever since she uh, said that to me, I've been saying their names. And I'll do that at the end of this episode. Uh, on several of the episodes, my guests have said their names with me. These are people who've been killed in police brutality. And I want to pause here and note the story out of Atlanta that was just breaking before we went on the air. Overnight, there was a shooting in Atlanta uh, by a police officer. And this time, the story was a little bit different. But what changed is the swift action that's been taken already. So let me tell you what happened. There was a man sleeping in his car and an African-American man. And he was uh, rousted by the police and they tried to arrest him. We have to decide, we have to find out why they tried, what, what they were arresting him for. And in the tussle, he got a hold of uh, one of the officer's tasers. And a taser, as you know, is a, a device meant to immobilize. Uh, I have a friend who's taken a taser voluntarily as a journalist and he, he told me, the kind of pain and shot through the system it is is un, you know is something he'd never imagined and will never want to go through again. And that uh, the he had already been tased, but somehow he grabbed the taser and as he was running away, I'm just saying all this from memory. He was uh, the pol a police officer responded to uh, the attempt of being tased by. Uh, the gentleman with the with the taser, they shot and killed him. And that was yesterday. And typically you would have seen weeks of investigations and waiting for the video and everything else. But today on Fox News, which I watch occasionally to understand the depths of the misinformation and disinformation being shared on Fox, I watched uh, a live press conference where the mayor of Atlanta 
dismissed, announced the dismissal of that police officer because it was a disproportionate and inappropriate use of guns. And also the police chief of Atlanta is stepping aside because she wants the community to come together. And this tells you how some things are starting to change. That does not bring back this gentleman who was shot and killed by the police. To be clear, there are always circumstances under which the police will use guns. The question is that every person on earth has the right to a fair trial, at least in America they do, and no one has the right to, to basically execute someone without a trial on the streets of any city in America. But that's what's happening, and that's what the protests are about. It's not the guilt or non-guilt of any of these people. It is that there is no reason for anybody to die today when they are having an interaction with the police. And that's why this matters. I can tell you that I'm the son of a son-in-law of a police officer, a police chief in India, and I have utmost respect for police officers who do their work and who help their communities. Uh, but I understand what is happening with the uh, with the uh, anger and and uh, all the questions that have come up about the police and the protests against them. Uh, I went to my first protest taken by my 17 year old twins, my daughter and son took us out to a, a protest and we stayed socially distant. We stayed together as a pod, but we still protested. And one of the things that uh, we talked about, we heard uh, about and we discussed after is the defund the police movement. And I am totally in favor of what they are calling for, but what they're calling for is not being understood because of the wording. When you hear defund the police, people who are looking for an excuse to attack will say, will interpret it in the worst way possible, meaning remove the police, dismantle the police. What the defund the police people are saying, reform the police, de-escalate the police, take away their funding on certain uh, issues uh, and certain um, military, militaristic weaponry and things like that and redirect it to the communities in the cities of America. That's what they're saying. But because defund the police sounds like abolish the police, which is also what some people, some activists are saying, it is becomes confusing and that's where the conservatives, the right, the Trump people all benefit. And that's what we're seeing. I've said for years that the term global warming was used from the beginning and first in the 70s and 80s. And then of course in the 90s, it took real momentum. But if it had always been called climate change, maybe there would not have been an excuse because every time the weather gets cold, Trump is out there saying, oh, look, it's cold. There's no global warming. Right? So we've been called climate change, maybe it would have been different. Tell me what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in your comments. This is one of the things that we're learning about as we go through all that we're seeing in the world. Let's uh, keep going here. You're watching number episode number 94. I'm sorry I don't have one of our awesome guests here, but you can always go back and watch the episodes of all these great guests that we had. Let me show you a few of them so that you will be tempted to go back in and take a look at uh, the shows that we have done. And let me play for you a clip of Sonny Slaughter talking on one of our episodes. This was episode number 80. Hello, everyone across the world. I am Sonny Slaughter. I am in the DC area, specifically Maryland. And it has been a very long, painful, and sobering week of trauma, vulnerability, disruption, murder, and mayhem. Um, I am a vulnerability expert. I am also a federally certified law enforcement instructor with the Department of Homeland Security specializing in um, crimes against persons domestic violence, human trafficking expert with DHS. I am also a, I specialize in hate and bias crimes. I have trained law enforcement across the globe. 
And what I saw earlier this week was murder. It was painful. And more importantly, I am a black woman. I am a black mother, a daughter, and I'm tired like everyone else and everything that you see in America, no matter where you are, everyone can see what is happening. And when you talk about burning and looting, that is a accumulation and a compilation of pain that resonates for 400 years and people have had eaten up. It was the video. It was the image. It was the eight minutes and 46 seconds where we watched George Taylor cry out for his mother and say he can't breathe. We can't breathe. We cannot breathe. Black people can't breathe. I am the mother of two sons and two daughters and I can't breathe because I know that when they leave from my home, that they are not safe. I trained in law enforcement. My oldest son's father is a police officer. We have police officers and armed forces that run in our family so deep. And this has just been a horrible week. That was Sunny Slaughter. You must check out that episode that we did. We were honored to have her and Keisha Center, as well as Adam Server on that show. She said that her connection to law enforcement and the military runs deep. And one of the things we heard, well, we talked to her, you saw a flag behind her in a, a triangular case. For those of you not in America, you may not realize that that's the flag that would have draped a coffin in the military and then it's presented, it's folded and presented to the widow or the widower or the parents of someone who has been killed in action. And that's the, uh, the flag from the coffin of her uncle. And in, I, I'm gonna have trouble relating the story because it is unbelievable. You could not make this up if you were trying to be a Hollywood writer. Sonny's father, uh, Sonny's grandfather was a telegraph operator in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, in the Washington Navy Yard, uh, when uh, he got a, the message that his son had been killed in Vietnam. And that was the son, that coffin that you, the flag that you saw behind Sonny. And that tells you the sacrifice that African Americans have made in this country, for this country, for decades, for centuries. And these are the stories that Americans that who are not paying attention don't know. One of the things that we say on this on the sh on the show for for the last several weeks, we have said that there are people who don't know, that there are people who need to learn, that people who need to wake up, and that includes me and people around me and people in my community. There are very activi activist and very uh, involved South Asian Americans, but there are also many who are not, not just not involved, but also have a blindness to the suffering of African Americans. And I'm sorry to say that yesterday on our show with Alyssa Richardson, the author of the book uh, about bearing witness while black, we had one of my friends on this show, on Twitter, posting comment after comment, showing his ignorance, uh, his lack of understanding, his lack of empathy. He said things like, what is the, what is it? He said something about freebies for African-Americans. He said something about how, uh, how African-Americans got lots of goodies after uh, after slavery ended. So what are they complaining about? And Alyssa tore apart the arguments one after the other. And I was not sure first if I should show those comments, 
but then I realized that I must show them because it reflects how educated people can be so ignorant, how educated people can know so little uh, today. And we see that in lots of communities, not just mine, but racism is real. And one of the reasons is that privileged, overeducated South Asians like me come into this country and are given the benefit of the doubt and are given an opportunity to succeed that not everybody else, else is. There are, of course, poor South Asians in America, including in this city, almost a quarter of the South Asians in this city are close to or under the poverty line. But, and before I say the but, I should also say also Muslim Americans, including South Asian Muslims, are, are uh, profiled, are attacked, uh, have faced the consequences of, uh, consequences of Islamophobia. But the South Asians who come from India, from other countries, uh, for grad school, for engineering and others, are not taught anything. Well, what do you learn in an engineering school about the history of America? Nothing. I know people in my community who know nothing about the sacrifices made by African Americans, by Native Americans, by Hispanic Americans, by Chinese Americans, and by Japanese Americans in the internment camps, like nothing. They know nothing about these, the people that I'm referring to. And we saw on full display, if you go back and watch my episode yesterday with Alyssa Richardson, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. And I was glad that I was able to show that and, and have her answer him in the clearest possible words. Uh, the same people who talk about uh, how uh, you know, African-Americans uh, could, could be doing better and working harder and things like that, these are the same people who will, uh, and, and, you know, who complain about freebies and welfare and things like that. These are the same people who will never ask about corporate welfare and uh, the handouts being given to corporations in America. Um, this, is, this is also the, the country and uh, where we have so much that's been done uh, against uh, African-Americans and so few people pay enough attention to know why and what we're seeing today, uh, 14 days plus uh, 19 days almost after the death of George Floyd, what we're seeing is uh, people of all colors stepping up and speaking out and all of them working together to raise awareness. So many people in this country, uh, including people in my family, supported Donald Trump because they liked what he had to say, because he was a TV star, because he looked presidential in their eyes, and they liked some of what he said. I can tell you an ex experience that I had. We, um, we worked with Univision to put together a concert on the border uh, of Mexico and the United States two weeks before the 2016 election to reach Hispanic voters and tell them uh, it, it was just a, that you must vote. That's all we were saying and uh, raise awareness around the issues. You may remember how the entire Trump uh, election campaign was based on race and racist behavior, uh, including starting with the comments on Mexican rapists and the birther movement and everything else. And do you know that despite all the efforts and everything that Donald Trump said, that uh, a larger percentage of Hispanics voted for Donald Trump than Mitt Romney? And that tells you something about how people will vote on the things that they think matters. This is not political to, for me to say that Donald Trump has deliberately gaslighted America and deliberately made it so problematic for people to understand what's happening in this country. And he's speaking not in, in dog whistles anymore. He's, he's baying at the moon himself. And to every one of the Trump supporters uh, and Republicans who have not repudiated him, I say, come get your boy. What do I mean by that? I mean that he has uh, done things that are so cruel. And as Adam Server, who, uh, who was on my show with Sonny Slaughter, episode number 80, he said, the cruelty is the point. When we say things are cruel, uh, this morning we saw the headline, uh, Donald Trump is, is rolling back 
Obama era, well, you could say dot, 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 anything, right? But this was about transgender protections uh, and access to healthcare for transgender people. Why would you do that? It's so cruel. Well, the cruelty is the point. That's what inspires his base. And you can't say, well, I'm here for the taxes and the tax cuts and the judges, but I'm not here for everything else. Well, that's not how it works, folks. You have to be there for everything. You have to own him. You have to come get your boy. Some of you who have known me for 25 years, and if you're catching me, you might say, boy, that's, uh, why are you talking like this? Aren't you supposed to be a journalist uh, who is impartial? Well, I am not a daily reporter at a news outlet anymore. Uh, and I have seen that there's no point in sitting on the sidelines. Before the pandemic and everything that's happened, I said in multiple interviews at the end of the year that 2020 is going to be the most important election of our lifetimes, and 2020 is going to be the most elect important year when historians look back because of everything from climate change to inequality and other things. Of course, we didn't know about the pandemic then. And now it's even more urgent that people step up, participate, vote, not just in the presidential election, but in all the uh, uh, tickets and participate in the electoral process. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. That's one of the things I've learned. So let's go in and get some of your comments and see what you say. I welcome uh, people who have other, other opinions, who want to push back. I'm here to listen to you. Uh, let's uh, pull up, pull these comments here so I can uh, read them to you. Um, let's see. Uh, I think they will be like fidget spinners, just a souvenir of the time we're in. We're talking about masks. Uh, Patricia says, the more I know, the less I know. I've been watching plenty of documentaries based on all sorts of topics. Thank you. One of the things I have learned, I wrote this down, no one knows. No one knows anything for sure, right? There is no playbook. I do a presentation that I have been giving in my endless Zoom calls uh, of things uh, that have changed and what we have learned in these last few months. And the number one item is no one knows. Even the sainted Dr. Fauci doesn't know. And by the way, speaking of Dr. Fauci, do you realize that the health warnings and the, uh, and, and the information that was coming up from the White House Task Force has not been public in 48 days? It's as if the pandemic is over. The pandemic is not over. Hundreds of new cases every day. People are dying in America and around the world. We're getting ready for a second wave, third wave. All of that's coming, and this government treats it as if nothing has nothing matters and everything has changed and everything is okay, but it hasn't. Uh, let's see. Charles is watching from Southern California, Ventura. Folks, please share. Please tag your friends. Uh, even if not for this show, we have an amazing series of shows coming up this week, including, let me tell you, on uh, on Tuesday, you're going to meet Nick Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn are going to be here at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll make sure you get a chance to watch that a recording later. On Wednesday, we're going to host the New York City Parks Commissioner, Mitchell Silver. He is an awesome uh, uh, leader in, in New York, and you will hear from him. What's it like to go out? What's it like to be a black man in senior leadership at this time? You will also uh, meet on Thursday, the chief scientist of the WHO at noon Eastern. Um, and then on Friday, we're going to mark Juneteenth as well as the hundredth uh, episode of this show. Uh, so please uh, tag your friends, please hit share right now so your friends and family can watch and join us. Please look at the archives. Please email me with suggestions, guest speaker ideas, themes, and topics. We're going to keep going as long as we're on lockdown. Sri at Sri.net is my email. My YouTube is youtube.com slash Sri.net. Uh, Fernando is tagging a friend. Uh, Mark says he's attended more Zoom calls than I ever thought possible. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Radian says, your demeanor and openness and willing to, willingness to learn help steady me. I'm sure others might say the same. I can't tell you uh, how honored I am to hear that. Uh, my father is here and saying, seeing you every day has been a tonic for your parents. Thank you, Acha. My dad in Kerala with my mom, Lekha, they're both there. And uh, I would have made two more trips to India already. My dad's birthday is coming up and uh, I'm not gonna be there for his birthday, but 
I'll be there in spirit and uh, in Zoom, I'm sure. Uh, Patricia says, I'm amazed how much information we have access to. And for that, I am grateful, including our awesome shows. Oh, thank you. That's uh, so very kind. Stefan says, hi, from Ramsey, New Jersey. What I've learned so far, everybody do this, write this up. What I've learned so far, that this extrovert is not the best at quarantining, but we must, and I am, abiding by all the rules set out by the experts. Please do the same for all. And Stefan's on my team at DigiMentors. We do a lot of amazing work, not because of me, but because of the team. And Stefan is uh, on that team. And among the things he's learned is how to do his own weekly show. Check out the Spin It Social Hour on uh, uh, online. And he's at Spin It Social. So check it, check him out and check his check out his feed. And speaking of our company, DigiMentors, let me just show you uh, what we're doing and what we're up to. We are offering services to convert your in-person events into virtual events. Uh, you can have your own live web show like this one. Uh, we're also doing consulting and training. Don't cancel your conference without writing to me, sri at sri.net. Talk to us before you cancel your events or postpone them. We can be 10% of your company's production team or 100% of your production team. And tomorrow, we are producing this brand new show. She's on call with Dr. Sujana and Dr. Marina, who are surgeons in New York. The first guests are going to be Dr. Dara Kass and Dr. Hafia El Tahir. And that's tomorrow at 11 a.m. on June 14th. Please do join us as we talk to them. That's one of the things that our business does. We have done dozens of events uh, around the world, including the world's largest gathering of teachers, 100,000 teachers registered from 88 countries, and we had 25 speakers. Our team did all the technical production on it. We're so proud of that project. Please check out t4.education, t, the letter t, the number four, dot education. Debbie Michelle is watching from Michigan. Hi, Debbie, one of my former students. I'm so glad we can ask anything. I've been wondering why you've changed rooms. The background, the backdrop is different from earlier shows. You are so right. How did that happen and what's the story there? Well, uh, here goes. I got kicked out by my own family out of my own home. What does that mean? I was in a different background because I was at home, but I was doing 15 hours of shows a week. And uh, that just got on everybody's nerves and they had enough of me and they wanted to kick me out. And so they did without asking me. They called up our friend Rajni, whose family moved out of our building. And they said to her, please let him use our let him use the apartment. Otherwise, we're going to kill him. And then you will have to let us use the apartment for the funeral. So your choice. And she was kind enough to let me use her fantastic apartment. Uh, that's uh, been now almost 50 episodes we've shot from here. And I'm so grateful and I'm so blessed to have friends uh, like her. And also a big shout out to my family uh, for letting me um, uh, do these shows to connect, to work hard at this time. And uh, my wife, who lets me do all this, uh, even while she has a full-time job and the burden falls heavily on, on the women in a home. And even when people want to help, uh, as I do, and my children are great cooks, so they cook as well, uh, but the burden always is disproportionate on the women and a salute and a shout out to uh, the women in the homes uh, that have made uh, it possible for so many people to uh, survive this quarantine. Uh, Patricia says she's enjoying audiobooks. Uh, Rahadiana says, I am alarmed and, and angered at a video I saw last night on St. Mark's Place. Most were not wearing masks. It's like eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. In fact, tomorrow you could well die if you don't wear a mask. Today, when my son and I went out, people were wearing masks. I'm just going to show you. We ended up at Katz's Deli, which you may know is a great New York City landmark. Um, and uh, everyone was wearing a mask inside. You had to wear a mask to go in. And uh, if you have stood in line there, it's always so busy and I've never seen it so empty. Look how empty it is. If you've been to Katz's Deli, this is not how it normally looks. And uh, But people were wearing masks. And this is the place where the famous Harry Met Sally scene was shot. And there's the sign here uh, where, where Harry Met Sally hoped you have what she had enjoyed. Do you remember that famous scene where uh, where 
uh, Meg Ryan and uh, Billy Crystal are are talking, and uh, she pretends to be in ecstasy and show him that women can can uh, can fool uh, the the men in their lives, and uh, she goes into this fake orgasm. And over at the next table, an older woman says, "I'll have what he what she's having." And that, by the way, was Billy Crystal's mother who was playing the role of that older woman. So uh, a place of uh, cinematic history. And they have a sign right there in the in 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 Katz's Deli. And we went out uh, for the first time. We were there for business in the neighborhood, uh, some family work we had to get done. And uh, we said, well, while we're there, we might as well uh, uh, go into Katz's. And we also went into a, a small uh, Himalayan uh, Cafe Himalaya, I think it's called, a, a Nepali food, and uh, we were able to order there as well. Uh, let's keep going. Um, Debbie says, I'd love to see your setup, what lights, you special mic, uh, stream yard, etc. One day we'll do an episode just about that. I have two lights here. This light's not even pointing in the right direction. I have this stand, and uh, we use a tool called StreamYard that allows us to be live on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, YouTube, and LinkedIn. We're not on Instagram. Why? Because Instagram doesn't allow third parties to come in and broadcast into there. You could do your own Instagram live, of course, and a lot of people are, but uh, StreamYard is what we use. Uh, 14 weeks, says Jonathan. Uh, uh, Fernando is continuing to track, tag his friends. Fernando, I'd love to have you on the show and tell us what's happening in LA. And Doug says, go to douglevy.substack.com. We'll get you right to the subscription options for the almost daily COVID-19 headlines. Thank you, Doug. I have my newsletter that I'm working on produced with Zach Peterson out of Prague. And you can get that at srinet.substack.com, srinet.substack.com. My uh, various issues you can find on there, the archives. I'll just show you what are the things that I've been learning because I've been writing that all through the, the crisis. And let me show you uh, some of the headlines that we have used on, the, uh, on it. Here is one, educate yourself, be an ally and take to the streets. That was this week. I wrote, my beloved America is on fire. Some thoughts on a truly horrifying week across the country. I wrote, there's a very good chance Donald Trump wins in November. His campaign has a ton of money, a sophisticated digital strategy, and will clearly do anything to win. And that's before the Russians step in. Media layoffs, both sidesisms, and, and credible news expertise in journalism has never been more important, and we're losing it fast. You can find it all on srinet.substack.com, srinet.substack.com. Hope you will sign up for that. Many of you already get it. I'm so grateful. Or just email me, sri at sri.net. Ask to be on my newsletter, and I would be honored to have you join us. Uh, Radhyan says, there will be artifacts in the same way that different with neckties are or leg warmers in the 1980s. Carlito says, namaste. I say namaste back to you. And the tragedy continues. And he's talking about the killing in Atlanta. And uh, Mark says, in Durham, North Carolina, restaurants are partially open, but I noticed most people were eating outside and not as much inside. And the lines and drive throughs are still very long. Just came back from Chick-fil-A and it was packed in the relatively small town of Durham, North Carolina. Um, Mark, uh, Doug says, uh, the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation has its hands full. Interesting agency too, very limited jurisdiction, but really all important and often excellent work in difficult situations. Uh, Fernando says, we've begun to have traffic jams again in Los Angeles, California. Um, uh, Mark says, I've learned it is possible to make some amazing virtual friends like you. Uh, Stefan, Sunny Slaughter, Vandana, Paula, Tim, Rose, and many others. I want to do a shout out to my two producers who are incredible. Vandana Menon, Vandana underscore Menon on Twitter, and Rose Horowitz, Rose Horowitz 31 on Twitter, who have been with me for 94 straight days as we produce this show. And every day they help in so many ways to make the show possible. Pradnya is here, former guest on the New York Times read along, and she says uh, hello from Silver Spring. Maryland, and that reminds me to uh, tell you about tomorrow's New York Times read-along. Uh, we will have Jack Myers, a nationally recognized advocate for diversity and inclusion in media and advertising. He'll be our guest, along with the two doctors who will be promoing their show that will start at 11 a.m. 
They'll be, we'll all be on from 10, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. That's 12.30 GMT. We've been hosting the show for more than uh, five, for five years I've been hosting the show and uh, very grateful to everyone who has supported it and helped make it uh, the success. It has been reading aloud the Sunday New York Times. Uh, we've been doing that now for more than, uh, uh, for five years now. And uh, it, I learned so much every day. We recently had Nobel laureate Joe Stiglitz on the show. Please go into our archives and you can find it youtube.com slash Srinet. Look at the New York Times read along archives. And very excited to tell you that on Father's Day, we'll have the print editor of the New York Times will be with us. He's a father himself, Tom Jolly, will be here to uh, read the New York Times with you to take your questions 8.30 a.m. next Sunday on Father's Day. Please join us and speaking of Father's Day, don't forget our Father's Day promo. Send us uh, a photo and a message to read aloud about your father. Digimentors.link slash Father's Day. Could be your father, your uncle, a male role model or grandfather, anyone. On Father's Day, we had 25 women celebrated on Mother's Day version of this. 50% of proceeds will go to charity. Uh, please contact us. Please email me, sri at sri.net if you have a question. Otherwise, just go to digimentors.link slash Father's Day. Just take a photograph or a screenshot and please share it with your family and friends as well. Let's keep looking at these comments. And uh, Mark says, can't wait to meet my friends in real life as well. Uh, Rahadyan says, we are essential cannon fodder. And uh, this is uh, so great to see Paula here. Paula is one of the producers of the New York Times Real Long and an awesome part of our team. And Paula remembered the uh, empty subway photos that I was showing to you earlier. So many comments coming in. Aparna says, I, I feel like having worked and lived in East, Southeast Asia, we have a precedent for mask normalcy, yet here we are. And that's because of the failure of leadership, the failure of technology, the failure of the media to understand that uh, the uh, there was a crisis coming and that was going to come here. And uh, on January 31st, I'm not saying I'm precedent in any way, I started a Twitter thread, an epic Twitter thread about coronavirus and started writing about uh, and, and compiling thoughts on it. And I posted that on January 31st, the city uh, and the country wouldn't shut down till March, 20, March 14th. So for six weeks, we all, including me, we were doing these episodes and everything else. And we kept looking at, oh, China is the basket case. Italy is a basket case. But we didn't realize that we are the basket case and we've become the epicenter of the epicenter. And, in, uh, and that's one of the uh, many sad things that we have noticed and learned uh, uh, during this time. I also want to just look at where we are with the Johns Hopkins world map. Uh, just to remind you where we are, we've crossed 2 million um, uh, deaths in the world. And uh, we have, uh, uh, sorry, we've crossed 429,000 deaths in the world uh, of 7 million cases and 2 million cases in the United States and uh, 100,000 deaths. And look at that, America, look how much far ahead America is than any other country in the world and what that tells you about um, the failure of American leadership, the failure of American media, uh, the failure of the American system, and uh, the fact that we thought we could uh, survive anything and everything. And we uh, it starts with a leader who uh, has told us that you can drink bleach, who said that this will all disappear like that. Uh, uh, the leadership has failed in this country and we are all suffering and will continue to suffer. And uh, as I keep saying, come get your boy, uh, uh, folks. Uh, let's keep going. Daryl says, I have learned that freedom, American democracy means you don't have to follow government rec recommendations and regulations like wearing masks and maintaining safe distance, even if it means you can infect and kill someone and be infected and killed by someone. I'm so disappointed in Americans who place personal freedom above what's best for society and community. I'm so very Trump disappointed, even more than I was disappointed when these same people voted in Trump. And one of the things we saw was white people with guns storming state houses, demanding that we 
uh, give them the, their right to a haircut and, uh, and things like that. And I also want to uh, say a word to everyone who's focused on looting and rioting instead of the peaceful protests all over this country. Um, millions of people going onto the street and being peaceful in their protests. I saw not one person carrying a gun uh, while protesting, but we saw uh, white conservatives uh, out there uh, carrying a gun, uh, carrying guns, machine guns. Imagine, we said, if African Americans uh, did that, and uh, when they had the chance to protest, they didn't do it. And that's what we shouldn't forget, that I have been in uh, one of the protests, thanks to my children, and we saw how peaceful it was. There was still anger. There was so much to complain about, but it was peaceful. And um, I, I want to keep hearing from you, hearing your thoughts. We won't get through all the questions and comments today. Um, uh, Laurie's watching in Westchester. Thank you, Laurie, for being here and for watching so, uh, so often. Um, uh, Doug says, the firing of the officer occurred after multiple videos were reviewed. That's the Atlanta story that we're saying. And Ashok is watching from Mumbai. And uh, so many people are commenting. Aradian says, in my opinion, toxic masculinity and the fetishization of the military, its uniforms and the weapons and vehicles is counterproductive to us as a society. And by the way, this is all led by a, a president who himself, when he had the chance to serve, as the New York Times reported, uh, went out of his way to have his father uh, get for him a letter describing bone spurs in his feet uh, by a podiatrist who uh, was a tenant of his father's. And with that, he was able not to go to Vietnam. And we, we know the term chicken hawk for someone who hasn't served in the military, doesn't understand its sacrifice, and goes out and becomes more harsh as a, uh, and more hawkish than anyone else. Uh, that's what we are uh, seeing. Uh, we were saying that uh, powerful, saddening testimony from Miss Slaughter, one of the episodes. I had plans to show you so many more of our episodes, but we just are not going to have the time because we're already out of time. And maybe we will do this in some other fashion at a future episode. But please go in and look at our, uh, our archives that we have of uh, episode after episode that we have uh, put together here that you can, you can find. Um, and we're so grateful to everyone who has, uh, who, has, who has watched and supported us. Just go to youtube.com slash Srinet and you can find every one of our episodes, uh, just our recent episodes, Bearing Witness, While Black, uh, Ask the Doctors, Voting Issues in the United States. Uh, we met the Dean of Wild Cornell Medicine. Uh, we talked about the US prison system and uh, let me play just a clip quick a screenshot clip from uh, from that uh, here if I can show you. You know, it's very he's very kind and generous to people. And he's you know he's almost like an uncle I had, you know, that also worked with the uh, community. Now you'll say what's going on here? That's Otis Johnson, who served forty four years in prison. And he was on our US prison system episode with Shaheen Pasha, a journalist and former student of mine who runs the Prison Journalism Project. And he's been, he was in prison from 74 to 2014. Imagine how much America and the world has changed. He is really good on WhatsApp, but doesn't know how to use a computer. He has an access to an old computer and he's learning, but he joined us on WhatsApp. So I have to hold up my phone to talk to him. This was our episode with him. It was episode uh, the episode that just uh, ran earlier this week. Uh, please do look in the archives and you can find this episode and learn uh, from Otis and his story of forgiveness and, uh, and trying to help people will, will inspire you, I promise. Um, we're running out of time. Uh, Neil says, Sunny Slaughter is worth listening to over and over again. And uh, so many folks, Anand's watching from India, from Andhra Pradesh. And, uh, uh, and Sunny's uh, here watching at least a bit of it. I hope she'll rewind and see where we talked about her after this is over. So many folks commenting, um, uh, and, and I'm not gonna get a chance to go through all of this. Aparna says, 100% uh, on failure on leadership and clear, consistent communications. That's one of the things we lost in all of this. And it is 
Uh, so uh, sad, Aparna says she's uh, excited that Tom Jolly, the print editor of the New York Times, will be our guest on next Sunday. But tomorrow also we have an awesome show. Jack Myers will be here, who's an advocate for diversity. Please uh, do join us for the New York Times read along. Ying Chan is here. I learned about re resilience and persistence from the way you're doing your show. Well, Ying is an amazing person. I want to tell you that one of the things I said that I learned during this was the unending friendship of my friends around the world. Because among the things she did was in the middle of this crisis, she's in Hong Kong, she bought uh, masks and uh, sent them to us in New York maybe a hundred, maybe more. And each one was individually sealed so that you could you know, give them to somebody without opening it and touching it and everything else. And she sent it to someone in Canada who then sent it to me and I was so touched. And that's just one example of what a wonderful woman Ying Chan is. Uh, please follow her on Twitter, Ying World. And she's at the University of Hong Kong and we work together every week on, once, on, on one of these incredible episodes of conversation uh, that we've been able to do. So I urge you all to uh, to tune in uh, tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And before we go, I thought I would show you a little brochure that we put together that I've used in order to get speakers and also to share uh, what it is we uh, do uh, on the show with people who don't know anything about the show. And uh, let me see if I can um, show this to you. Uh, here we go. Uh, and so this is what I've been doing when we talk about, you know, what we've learned and what we've done. Uh, we have four shows, the Daily Global Social Media Show, the Coping with COVID-19 Radio Show, the New York Times Read Along every Sunday, and the weekly show with the University of Hong Kong. We've had more than a million viewers and listeners in part because we're now live streamed on scroll.in, one of India's best news, culture, and uh, entertainment and news websites, analysis websites. There's a wonderful article written about our work. And uh, this is what we're so proud of. In one slide, you're seeing Bill Ritter was a guest on this program. He had COVID-19, one of the most famous anchors in America. He was here with us on the show. And this is the graphic we use to tell the story of our show. Uh, in the first 75 episodes, we've had more than a million viewers. We've had 155 guests. 91 have been women. And the speakers have been from 38 cities in 10 countries. And that shows you the value of intentionality. From the beginning, we knew we were going to showcase the voices of women on the show. And we want to continue to do that. So if you have guest ideas, please tell us. Please subscribe on youtube.com slash 3net. You can be a sponsor of our show. The prices are so inexpensive, as you can see. Um, very, very inexpensive. And maybe if you have nothing you want to promote, maybe you want to do an ad for a favorite nonprofit that you want to support as we've had people do that anonymously and non-anonymously, just email me if you want to be a sponsor of this show and look at some of the comments that have come in. Uh, uh, we love hearing from all of you guests from around the world, uh, tune in and uh, people say, look at this, it says Sri, this is a life, uh, this lifeline is something I look forward to daily and I'm so humbled by all these great comments and hundreds of journalists watch the show for story ideas and here's just one example of people commenting and taking ideas from our shows. And we love when that happens. And our guests have become, uh, uh, have had a chance to be featured on other podcasts and elsewhere. And so many kind words from Australia, from California, so many people. I am so grateful. Uh, uh, here's Angela talking about the setup in, our, in this apartment, people talking about it in various places. And I just thought we'd look at the social media. We have a terrible Twitter handle, uh, not handle, we don't have a handle, we have a hashtag, Sri COVID-19 call. I myself mess it up, I should have just called it uh, Sri COVID-19 or Sri COVID show or something, but here we are. And after the first 45 shows, we had uh, 478 contributors, uh, 1,600 tweets, uh, 32 million impressions and uh, 7 million reach. And now we've had 17 million reach and 67 million impressions, uh, all of that because of all of you. And we had one single episode where we had so many viewers, as you can see, 179,000 viewers uh, were able to join us uh, for an episode we did with Doha Debates. 
and this teaches you something. It's not about you. It's about your network. It's about who's who's there. All of this stuff is what we show. So one of the things I learned is how to do graphic design better. And this is how I used to do my shows. Look how crowded this is. So packed. Um, one of the things we did was an episode where you can go back and find an episode we did on a design tutorial, a free design tutorial with my design guru, Shristi Hebar. And uh, she said, this has got to go. And this is what our design looks like now. Simple, clean, clear. Uh, this is what YouTube likes. This is what the internet likes. And I learned that from doing this again and again. I learned how to use Canva. And you can see uh, the vast improvement in my own work uh, in this uh, through this. I will just show you this other fun thing. Uh, we, we're trying to make the case that people should give me interviews. It's not so easy, by the way. And that's why we're blessed that so many people came on our show. Uh, this is a list that somebody put together of the most influential non-resident Indians in the world. And you know this is a terrible list because at number six, I'm above Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And Sanjay is the most important Indian American uh, in the world right now because he's bringing uh, such clear, useful medical information to the world. But of course, my mom would be very proud to have me at number six. Uh, and uh, so it's amusing. And uh, that's part of the reason that's there. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here. We have an amazing lineup of guests. We're going to be live uh, every day this week. I want to highlight Tuesday. We're going to have Nick Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn at 5 p.m. Eastern. Maybe at 9 p.m. we'll rerun it somehow so that you can watch. Uh, we also have uh, uh, on um, uh, Thursday, we have the chief scientist of WHO, the World Health Organization, will be with us. We're so blessed to have the quality of these speakers. On Wednesday, we'll have the New York City Parks Commissioner, Mitchell Silver, will be here. And on Friday, we're going to celebrate the 100th episode of the show. Maybe we'll do multiple shows as we did for the 50th. Uh, but we have so much to learn, so much to share with the world. We're so grateful to all of you for being here. Thank you all. I just can't thank you enough. Sujana says, you made the small the world a small family. That's an amazing feat. And tomorrow, Sujana will be launching her own show. I can't tell you how proud I am of her and the team that has put this together. We'll be live tomorrow. Um, I, I am an executive producer with Sujana and Marina as we are learning how to do this kind of show. Our first guests are Dr. Dara Kass and Dr. Hafia El Tahir, and we're going to talk. Uh, and there's going to be a show run by women for everyone. And let's learn. We don't see enough female voices in the medical field. We, we're seeing more and more, of course, but we need to see more. Uh, and that's why we're proud to bring you the show. And maybe you would like a show of your own. Contact me, email me, three at three.net. Don't cancel your conference. Uh, or don't plan your virtual conference without us. We've seen some really bad Zoom calls. You know this show is not a Zoom call the way we do our banners and our tickers and everything else. And this is meant to be a television show. The way I do it is a poor man show because I'm doing all the production myself. But uh, when we when you hire our team, we, we give you an amazing show. On Monday, we're, we're hosting a conference at which there will be two senators speaking. And again, we're so humbled that we're able to do all this. Uh, and Rupa is thanking Ying Chan for the masks. And uh, and uh, Laurie White is with us. Uh, Laurie is uh, with the uh, uh, Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce. Uh, for, uh, it's with them that we're doing uh, their uh, congressional breakfast. And we're also doing uh, the show for the University of Rhode Island, where we will be uh, interviewing uh, Nick Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn. It's going to be amazing. Jonathan says, the few Hong Kong shows I've been able to watch have been fantastic. Thank you uh, so much. Mark says, when will you be on my podcast? And don't forget, I want I want She's On Call as a re-air. We would love to do that. Uh, we will we'll send you information, Mark. Thank you very much. Radian says, thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Don't leave, folks. We have to say their names, and we're going to do that in just a minute. Jonathan says, your shows are something I look forward to each day. See you tomorrow. Thank you. And Rose says, thanks to all of you for watching for so many days. She's one of our producers. So now we've got to do a couple of things. We've got to say their names, and then we've got to thank our sponsors as well. And uh, uh, how I've been saying their names is by um, using this Time Magazine cover story. Uh, you may have seen Titus Koffer, the artist who put this uh, painting together. 
and it's based in part on this photograph of a young George Floyd. Just look at this with his mother, Larsenia, who died two years ago, almost to the day, and he was buried next to her two years later. Very sad, and look at this portrait, and around it are the names that I'm about to read to you. And I read this, I read this to you with uh, humility and, uh, and, uh, and just thinking of everyone who has suffered in any way. Uh, and so let me start by reading these names. Trayvon Martin, Yvette Smith, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Laquan McDonald, Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Jermaine Reed, Natasha McKenna, Eric Harris, Walter Scott, Freddie Gray, William Chapman, Sandra Bland, Darius Stewart, Samuel DuBose, Janet Wilson, Kaylin Rockmore, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, Joseph Mann, Terence Crutcher, Chad Robertson, Jordan Edwards, Aaron Bailey, Stefan Clark, Danny Ray Thomas, Antoine Rose, Botham Jean, Tatiana Jefferson, Michael Dean, Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, and George Floyd. And those are just some of the names. You can go back all the way to Emmett Till and know the countless others who never, whose names we'll never know. Each one of those people has a story and those are the stories that we're trying to remember. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being with me. I'm so grateful to all of you and uh, thank you for being such a great supporter of what we're doing. Uh, Laurie's given us a thumbs up. Uh, uh, Patricia says, everyone wants to be remembered, paid forward, empathy. Ashok says, proud of you, Sri, thanks. Let's talk over the weekend prayers for your family. Looking forward to meet soon. Want to do show or with a show with you as Diaspora Dialogue. Thank you so much. Uh, Neil says we should include uh, Rashard Brooks in Atlanta on the list. Say his name. He's the gentleman who was shot to death last night. Whatever he's accused of, whatever he may have done or have been accused of doing, no one deserved to be shot to death uh, as, uh, as he was. And yes, he pointed a taser, but a taser is not a force that will kill you. I told you I have a friend who met some of you know, who has been tasered on purpose as a volunteer, as a journalist to experience it. It is the most uh, painful thing he's ever been through, but doesn't mean that uh, somebody should be killed because you're pointing a taser at you. Uh, and uh, uh, Parna says, say their names. Uh, uh, Radian says, as I've said elsewhere, may all of their memories be an inspiration for us to create a better world. Sajid, uh, Khan says, every 40 hours, a black man is killed. This is unacceptable. Every day, three women are killed by their current or ex-mates. The problem must also be addressed. So many problems must, in fact, be addressed. Tanya says, thank you for all you do. Thank you so much. And Mark says, amazing show as always. I'm so grateful to everyone here. Please send us suggestions, comments, feedback. Sri at Sri.net, youtube.com slash Sri.net. Please be a subscriber. We also want to remind you that one way to hear what we're doing is to just go in and let me pull up here our WhatsApp alert system. We send out an alert every time before we go live. This is not a racist WhatsApp group. This is just a WhatsApp alert that you can get uh, when I'm about to go live. Hold up your phone right now and grab this QR code. Uh, if you have an Android, you know how to use the QR code reader. If you have an iPhone, just point your camera and you'll get an invitation into the alert system. And we do also have to thank our sponsors, which I want to do and remind all of you that Rutgers is offering a free teen camp, global entrepreneurship experience. Learn from top entrepreneurs and startup experts from Cognizant, Angie's List, Google, Facebook, etc. cetera. Globalentrepreneurshipexperience.org, globalentrepreneurshipexperience.org. Save $20 with, save 20% uh, with the code SRE, S R. E -E. Take a photo, take a screenshot, share this, please. Also, Art & Co. Get involved with the world's largest online art auction, fundraising for COVID-19 victims, artandco.net, artandco.net. You may not be an art collector, but you know someone who is. And Muckrack Academy, which is paying for me and uh, my team to pr produce Fundamentals of Social Media, a free certification course coming June 17th, muckrack.com.
mrac.co slash social, mrac.co slash social. Please sign up. 3,500 people around the world have already signed up, and so should you. The course goes live on Wednesday. It's on demand. There's nothing live about it. It's on demand, but we will have a live gathering afterwards in a couple of weeks after you finish the course. Some of you will finish it that day in two hours. Some of you will take three weeks, three months. It doesn't matter, but please sign up, mrac.co slash social. And a reminder about our debut episode of She's On Call, Sunday, June 14th. That's tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. Dr. Sujana and Dr. Marina will be hosting the show, and their guests will be Dr. Dara Kass and Dr. Hafia El-Tahir. She's on call on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. Please follow, please connect right now with, uh, with them and follow them, please. And with that, I'll say goodbye. Thank you very much, everybody. Please keep in touch.